So if we assume that the data are normally distributed, I'll first look at something that's probably about the most commonly used test in statistics known as the t-test. So this is a test that assumes that the data are normally distributed for within each group and it's designed to compare two groups to see if there's a difference between them. So the null hypothesis, no difference between groups. We construct a t-statistic and this is what we did before and it's just got the calculation in here. That's the formulae that you saw briefly last week for the standard error of the mean. In practice, this will be probably be most easily done by a statistical package, so you'll probably not be calculating this even in Excel. We get the difference in the two means as 8.95, big difference between the means, and we want to see how likely that is to be different from zero given the standard error and the standard error of that difference is quite small compared to the size of the difference and so the ratio comes out to be large and as we saw and I'll show again that is um, statistically significant. So you saw the null distribution we had before that's in fact something called a t-distribution which is the distribution that this t-statistic would be expected to have if there was no difference between the means. So it would look something like this. And what we want to look at is the value of our R statistic, the 16.21, on that distribution. And the p-value is going to be calculated by the area in these tails, which is actually the probability that we might have obtained a larger value than our test statistic and it's conventional to, to double that so you, um, because the null hypothesis might be disproved by a, a positive result or a negative result, we're looking at how extreme does the result have to be, so you take the area below minus t as well and that forms our p-value and as we saw before for this um, t-statistic of 16.21 which was way off the scale for the distribution we got a highly significant p-value, a very small p-value, very small probability that the null hypothesis was true. So yeah, the t-statistic is quite easily calculated and before we had computers, people regularly calculated that by hand and they would determine the p-value by looking it up in statistical tables, but now we're lucky we can just operate a package quite easily and get out p-value and results of the tests. So I thought at this stage it was quite helpful maybe to give a feel for the kinds of things software packages are going to throw at you when you, you manage to get the coding right or select from the menus how to do your tests, you've got the data in the right places. Because in my view a lot of the packages, um, the output isn't very easy to read and they tend to give things that you, you don't need or they haven't explained properly. So I'll just show the output in a couple of packages that you'd get from doing a t-test. So this is Minitab, this is quite a straightforward package to learn and one you might want to think about if you're just doing basic statistical analyses. So if we put that data on the calves into the, the t-test in Minitab, this is what it gives us. It gives us the means, so if you haven't already got those, that's quite helpful to have the means, the standard deviation and the standard error. This line's not very helpful. It just tells us that the difference is going to be mu1 minus mu2. You might not, you might think, well, what's mu1, mu2? It doesn't tell us, but it, Minitab has this habit of giving phonetic interpretations of Greek symbols, um, so this is meant to be mu, which people sometimes use to de denote means. So that's not really very helpful, but it's saying the estimate for the difference, which is actually what we're talking about up there, minus 8.2. Nine five, which is the difference in the means, gives us a confidence interval. So if you remember from last week, that's the interval within which we expect that difference to lie 95% of the time. So we're 95% confident that the difference will be in that region. Tells us what we're testing, that the difference is equal to zero. Gives us the t-statistic that we've had before. And what you really want out of this analysis is the p-value. So it's actually approximated that by zero, although I personally never like to give a p-value as zero. I always say it's smaller than a very small number like 0.001. This is 
really just to say you get all this stuff, but don't feel you've got to understand every line of it. Um, it's really the p-value you're after when doing this test. An equivalent analysis in another package called SAS is different again. Again, it gives us the mean values and measure of their accuracy by the standard error. It repeats that and then goes on to give us the differences, which again is going to be 8 point, minus 8.95 between the groups. SAS actually gives an option of either working with equal variances for the two groups or unequal, whereas Minitab actually just used unequal variances. There's two slightly different t-values if you use equal variances, so you would pool these standard errors and get a common one. The t-statistics slightly different and the p-value is actually going to be a bit bigger. And it goes on to test the equality of the variances down here and says that the, you know, there's a significant, this is the p-value, a significant difference between the variances of the groups. So it was appropriate to use this second one. A lot of information in this, and, but again, the only thing you're really interested in is the p-value, unless you've got concerns about whether you know, the variance being different or not different between the groups. I think probably it's more conventional to use this unequal one, and that's what Minitab has done. So if in doubt, take the second one. But uh, you'll have seen in the Minitab output there was only one p-value anyway. So don't get distracted by understanding every line that you're given in the um, output from your packages. 